Good morning and welcome to our YouTube channel. You have found your way to the Pilates studio in New Forest. I am Louisa and we're going to be doing a chair Pilates class today. So all you will need is a chair and your mat and a safe space to work out in. Uh, we put a new video up every single week. So if you hit subscribe now, you're going to be notified as soon as we share that with you. Um, I'll let you grab your equipment and I shall see you on the mat. Good morning everyone, as I say we're going to be working with our chair today, so what I want you to do is just take it to your right hand side, I just want you to be able to rest your hand on it, I don't want it so close because we are going to add a little bit of side bend to our move, so make sure you've got a little bit of space for movement, I want you just to allow your shoulders to go easy and bring your focus to your feet, so I'd like you to think about having a really equal and even uh, weight throughout the feet, the heels the balls of the feet, and I'd like you to pick up all 10 toes, spread them wide, and then just connect them down with your mat. Let's turn your left arm back so your palm is facing to the side of the room. So just open the chest, and I want you just to look down at that hand. Look down to the tips of the fingers, feel that stretch down the neck, and then we're gonna lift the arm up. My gaze is following my hand. I take it over into my side bend, and then I'm going to turn to look at the hand on the chair. So just breathing normally here for a moment. What I'm going to do is press the hand away from the chair a little bit, and that presses my left hip out to the side of the room and just enhances that side bend. Okay, and then we look up to the arm and we bring the arm down. The back of the hand is going to tap the thigh. Again, for that stretch in the neck. Let's work with our breath. We inhale, take it over about the count of four. Pressing the hip to the side of the room and then exhale, we release it down. So just waking everything up, focus still on the feet as well. Inhale up and over, take that side bend, you're almost like a banana shape from the side and release it down. So your gaze just following your arm. Give me two more please. Inhaling through your nose, get as much from the move as you possibly can. And exhale through a soft mouth, just not holding any tension in the jaw, nor overly pursing our lips. Last one, we go up and over. And release it down. So as always, we're going to start moving our spine in every direction before the class starts. So we're going to do the other side after. But for now, what I'm going to get you to do is just put your hands on your chair. Feet still hip distance apart, and we're going to get a little bit of flexion into our spine. So I would like you, please, to breathe in and just round your back out. Spin your pelvis under you, so you're looking back towards the pubic bone. And then we're going to exhale, come into a little bit of extension of the spine, lifting the breastbone up, gazing in front of you. Inhale, we ripple through the spine, trying to get our tailbone and our nose closer together. And then exhale, you lift the breastbone up between the arms. So we're not trying to fold in the lower back. We're trying to get your uh, bottom rib and top rib further away from one another. Give me three more each direction. Inhale into this deep flexion. And then exhale, take it into extension or like a cow position in yoga. And into your cat for two. So think how an angry cat really rises its spine. And then exhale, reverse it. One more time, please. Round it out. And lift that breastbone up, lift your gaze. And we're just going to release, press ourselves away from the chair. And we're just going to take it to the other side so we can side bend the other way. So remember, we're trying to get as much from each movement as we can. We're not forcing it, but it's very deliberate. So you're not too close to the chair. Spin your right arm bone backwards, look down to the tips of the fingers, just soften your knees, equal weight in the feet. And we side bend up and over, look to the chair and press away from it. And release it down. So you can just breathe if you like, you could just let the breath flow, or you can come with me and inhale on the over movement, feel like you're breathing into the right hand side of the rib cage. And release it down. So not thinking about anything other than what's going on on our mat right now, just enjoying 
having the time just to slow things down and think about you and release. Remember, we're getting as much from it as we can. Final time into that deep side bend, stretching the right hand side of the neck there as you look down and release. So the only thing we haven't done, we've had a bit of rotation in the upper back and the neck there. We're going to add it into the rest of the spine. So I turn to face my chair again. I'm really strong here through my centre, my belly's in, my rib cage is in. I've got quite a low chair, so I'm having to bend my knees, but adapt to suit the, uh, the height of your chair. My left arm is going to lift up and I gaze up to the fingertips again. And then I'm going to thread through, I'm exhaling as I go through, I wrap around and feel just how that opens my shoulder blades. And then I inhale, lift, opening the chest. And exhale, thread through, you're staying strong the entire time. Two more. Can you just try and touch the ceiling? And round and thread under, almost like you're trying to give yourself a hug. Last time, please. Up. Final time on this arm. Through, hugging round, hugging round. How much can you get from it? And then take the left hand down. So I'm pressing my bum back a little bit. I'm really strong. We're going to do the same on the right. So for four, we open. Oh, I'm a bit tighter this side. And then exhale, thread. Look to that hand. And three, open out. Maybe we're feeling the movement increasing every time we do another one, just as we ease through any tension we're holding. And two. And thread. One more time, please. Open out, gaze up. Thread it through. And take the hand back down. You're just going to press yourself up and away from the chair and we're going to go into a little bit of footwork so we're really going to bring our focus to the feet. You're in a parallel position, your feet are just about as wide as your cheekbones apart and I want you to think about not leaning forwards as you come up to your toes so it's a pure upward movement and then melting the feet down and it's a pure upward movement. Let's get those heels a bit higher and then take it down. Give me four, please. Just make sure you've got weight in the big toe and the little toe here. Heels a bit higher. And as you're coming down, I don't want the heels just to flop down. I want you to feel like you're just pressing against something. There's a bit of pressure there. So they don't just come down. You're pressing against something. There's a bit of resistance. Last one, please. Coming up. I'm just going to turn to the side. Heels stay high, make sure all toes have weight in them and we're going to do like a little plie here. Note my bum hasn't poked back and we lift. The heels don't drop at all. Let's go for four and lift and three. So that's all my ankles shaking about a little bit, a bit of stability going on there or quite a lot. Give me two and lift. Last one, take it down, and we're gonna just pulse up and down here. So the heels aren't moving. Let's just check our knees are not drifting out. Imagine you've got a Pilates mini ball in between your knees. So the knees aren't together, but I feel like I'm squeezing on something. Give me five, four, three, two, hold it, and stand tall. Take your heels down, my feet are a bit wonky there. Make sure they stay lined up. I'm going to pick my right heel up now and really press my left heel down. And then I'm just going to take turns pedaling through the feet. And the heel that's lifting, what I feel like I'm doing is pressing the front of my ankle forwards there. And that's just going to enhance that stretch. Remember the heel that's coming down, you feel like there's a bit of resistance there. But you're pressing against something. Give me three. And two and one. Release that heel down. Now I'm just going to move my chair to the other side just so I stay nice and aligned and keep everything even. 
We're going to go into our Pilates V position, so not really, I'm not forcing out into a ballet first position. I've got the knuckles of my big toes together, and I'm just going to spin my thigh bones outwards a little bit, so my heels come together, my toes face out a little bit, and I'm feeling open in the hips, and I feel like my bottom muscles have just really switched on there. And then I'm going to come up to a releve or up to my tiptoes in this position, heels a bit higher. And then again, take your time bringing the heels down. It's not super slow, but you are definitely just taking your time to articulate through the soles of the feet like you would your spine on a shoulder bridge. Give me four. And lower. And I feel I'm going forward a little bit here. So three, when I was going up, I felt like I was leaning forward. Try not to let that happen. Imagine there's a pane of glass in front of you and behind you, so you cannot lean forward. Jasmine, welcome back, by the way. I forgot to say that because you were looking for your chair. It's lovely to see your face again. Two. Oh, my feet are wobbly today. And lower. Last one. Come up, please. And I'm going to just shuffle my feet a bit closer together so I can get my heels connected. And then I'm going to do a little plie here. Tailbone just dropping down. And as you lift, you squeeze those inner thighs. So again, to the side. My tailbone's going down, it's not poking out, my knees press wide. And then lift and squeeze. Give me four. Can we think about those heels staying high the whole time? And three. Sort of rib cage in. Lift. Two. Don't know about you, but I'm definitely shaking already. Last time, please. Take it down. Lift those heels a bit higher and pulse for me. Breathing as you pulse. Give me five. And four. Squeeze those heels. Three. Two. Hold it. Come on up. And lower your heels. Right, so we are going to use the chair as a bit of feedback. Um, because... Often I do lean forwards when I'm doing plie, so I mustn't let that happen. If you've got a taller chair, that's even better, because it will tell you if you're leaning forwards. Um, feet, your heels are about as wide as the chair legs there or thereabouts. Play with it, make sure that you feel happy with that. And we're going to keep the heels down for this first set, and I'm going to do a little plie here. Knees going out. And then lift up. Breathing and lowering. Breathing out, lifting. I'm going to turn to the side again. So, this isn't happening. If you've got a higher chair, that's going to stop that from happening anyway. Give me three. And two. So it's as if there's a wall behind you. You're gliding up and down it. Hold it down for one. And pulse. And pulse. So the legs don't fully straighten. Staying open in the chest. Give me four, three, two, one. Hold it and lengthen up. Okay, so we're remembering we're not leaning backwards and forwards. And I'm just going to work through my feet a few more times. I'm going to come up to my releve, pressing the front of the ankles forwards and then pressing down. You've got the resistance as the heels come down. Give me five. And lower. I okay, that wind stopped. That was crazy last night. Give me four. Ankles pressing forwards. And heels slowly pressing down. And three. I don't know about you, but I'm really feeling the arches of my feet beginning to strengthen. They're definitely starting to ache. Two more, please. We're going to hold it up on the last one. Come up. Okay, press the front of the ankles further forwards and plie here. So for me, I can come down a bit lower. I'm a bit tight down the back of the ankles. So because we've lifted the heels, it's taken that way. Plie, press your knees wide. And lift up. Give me four, tailbone down. Lifting by that imaginary piece of string attached to the crown of the head. Three, knees wider. And lift. Two. Not toppling forwards, are we? Get ready to hold it down. And we pulse here. 
small, controlled. Heels lifting a little bit higher. Give me four, three, two, hold it. Come up and lower your heels down. Ooh, well done. So I'm just gonna get you to take your chair to one side. You might use the chair after, you might not. We, uh, we're gonna do some lunges on the mat, then we might elevate the back foot. If that doesn't feel right for you, definitely don't do it. So remember what we're doing now because you can come back to this if you wish. Left foot forwards, right foot back. If you have any knee issues, you can just bring that right knee in a little bit closer or your right foot a bit closer. Okay, we're gonna bend the knees, lift your arms up, lift your gaze and come on up. So this is your option if you don't like it on the chair. Four. And lifting. So again, just taking your time. Three, explore everything that your body has to give. And two. Lifting up, tall and strong. My ankles are shaking again. There's a lot of stabilizing going on, a lot of strengthening. And we come on up. Step your right foot forwards. Take your left foot back straight away. You see my left toes have come to a turnout. I don't want that to happen. I want them to face forwards like my right toes. And again, just lunging for five. And lift up. Working with the breath if you like. Inhale down. Use that exhale to lift you and connect you. I'm so shaky on the side. Three. Lift the breastbone up into your t-shirt. And we come up. And two. Last time. So remember this move if you prefer to do it like this. And we come on up. Okay. Totally up to you though. So I'm gonna take my chair behind me. You can use a little bit of a grab on the wall or whatever you've got handy if that helps. So let me move my chair back. I am, I've got a long step here. My, oh dear, I missed the chair. My right toenails are just going onto my chair. Okay, I'm gonna find my balance and I'm just gonna bring my arms to chest height here so I can look at something on the wall in front of me. And then I come up. So, because your foot's elevated, you're gonna get a deeper stretch through the front of the right hip. And three. But remember, if you don't fancy this, then you tack on with the move that we did before. Two. And one. And lift. Okay, take it down. I'm actually gonna turn the chair around so I can grab hold of my bar to get my foot in the right position. So it's quite a big step forward. Okay, let you get started. Let you get sorted and then we'll get started, I should say. And we go down for five. Oh, and lift. So obviously you're getting a deeper stretch through the front of the left hip now. My goodness, this right leg has to work harder to pick you up. And three, I'm suddenly rather warm. And lift. We're going to give the arms a bit of work in a minute. Your legs are going to get a break. Two. Oh, no, they're not. I've, <laughs> I've got a whole other section of legs. I lied to you, sorry. Last one. Then they'll get a break. And lift. Oh, take that left foot down. Well done, okay, give your legs a little bit of a rub if you wish. In fact, I think we'll stretch out the quad. So I want you to take hold of your right ankle rather than your foot, pull the heel to your bottom. Watch the leg isn't drifting out to the side. So my thighs are lined up, coming towards my midline. Lift the breastbone up and just take that knee back a bit if you've got that mobility. I'm just gonna grab a sip of a drink whilst you do that. So think about really breathing through the stretch. And release. You might not need the chair. You've seen how wobbly I am. I'm gonna be holding on to it for dear life. Okay, heel towards the bottom, thighs lined up. 
breastbone lifted. Just watch that knee doesn't drift out. And if you can, you can pull it back a bit more, but definitely lift the breastbone. And release. Okay, so again, the height of our chair determines the position of our arms. Let me move mine forward. My chair is low, so we're gonna be doing these kickbacks working the bum. If you've got a high chair, you're gonna want long arms, so just play with it. What I am thinking about doing is I press my bum back, I've got this hinge in my hips again, belly gathers up, rib cage gathers up. Don't let your head go heavy. Let's think about strengthening these neck muscles. Okay, I take my right leg long, I'm on my, my toenails again. Shoulders are easy, kick the leg up. Reach it longer. Just soften your left knee a little bit for me, don't knock it out. Bend the right knee, heel towards the bottom, reach it long and lower it. Kick up, pause. Let's break the move down. Bend, the knee lifts a bit higher. Extend, you maintain that height, and then you lower it down. Remember that left leg is soft. Left knee is soft. Right leg up, bend, extend, and lower. So for me already, I'm feeling the left-hand side of my bottom is doing a lot of the work here. All that stability work. Oh, my left side of the bum is screaming, actually. Lift up, bend in, reach long, hold it there. Pulsing the leg up and down. It's not too much of a drop there, otherwise your muscles are getting a bit of a break. It's small and it's high. And then we circle the leg. From the thigh bone, spinning around in the hip socket. Drawing a circle on the wall behind you with your big toe. My circle is about the size of a dinner plate. Small and high, change direction. Give me four, three, two, and one. Take that foot down, just press yourself away. The left hand side of your bottom is probably what's aching. So I just want you to take your left foot onto your right thigh and then press your bottom back. Just to open out the left hand side of the outside of the hip. Breathe into your stretch. Again, we're staying really strong through the upper body. I'm not rounding into it because you won't get as much from the stretch and release. I'm just going to turn so you see my working leg. So again, don't let those shoulders go really tense. Think about them staying easy. You're not forcing them anywhere. I'm going to press my bum back, get that hinge in the hips, keeping me really strong. And then I'm going to go onto my left turn now. And I lift up and I bend in and I reach long and I tap down. Just four more, please. Soften that right knee, bend, reach, lower. Give me three, pause there. Imagine I'm with you, pulling your left leg longer and then bend, reach. I'm pulling that leg again and then you lower it down. We want as much length as possible. Final two, please. Can we please ensure your head's not going heavy? Remember thinking about strengthening these muscles at the back of the neck, just by not letting it flop. Reach it long, soften that right knee and pulse your leg. Small and high, don't drop too much. Breathing the entire time. And pause. Six circles, the size of a dinner plate, hitting the top of the circle each time. Again, I'm feeling the right hand side of my bottom working now. Change direction six and five. Not letting that lower back arch. You're staying really strong. Three. Oh, the plant's tickling my toes. Two and one. Oh, take that foot down and stand up. Taking your right foot onto your left thigh, pressing the bum back. So like a standing figure four stretch. Right knee is dropping down. Bottom presses back a bit more. And stand to release. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the arms. Now your bum is gonna get a little bit of a break. We're going to do some tricep dips. So I want you please just to shuffle your bottom towards the front of the chair. Heels of your hands on the chair, your fingers are gonna wrap round. So now let your bottom come off. The further your feet are away, 
the more challenging this is going to be. So just listen to your body. I want you to bend your elbows as you lower down. Now they're not going out to the side. You're not a chicken. They're going back. And lift. Let's work with our breath. Make it slow. Inhale down. Elbows in. Exhale up. So not much is changing shape, apart from that bend at the elbows and that deeper hinge at the hips. And lift. Give me three. Elbows in. And lift. Two. Lift up. We are going to pulse on the next one. So you choose how low you're going to go. And we pulse. So the arms are not going to fully straighten like our legs didn't in our L kicks a moment ago. Give me five. Elbows in more. Feel the back of the arms working. Getting into the bingo room. Three, two, one. Press up. Take your bottom down. So we're going to stretch out the um, triceps now. So you're going to take your right hand in between your shoulders. You can either stretch it by taking your left hand and pulling that arm back, feeling that length down there, or if you have the flexibility, you're going to interlink your fingers. Whatever works for you. Whatever works. And we know I'm a bit wonky, so I can do it easily one side, not so easily on the other. Okay, and release and switch sides. So again, why don't you check if you can interlink the fingers one side to the other? I think with Pilates, it's about getting that constant feedback. It's always, you know, our body's always giving it to us. But it's about just having the chance to stop and listen. If you pull the arm back a bit more, get the rib cage connected. And release. Okay, so the next move. Eventually, what we're going to be doing is like coming up into a teaser shape. If, for, if, if you need to today, you could take your shoulders onto the chair, back of the chair. You could take your hands there, because still I'm staying very strong through my upper body. So play with it again, adapt the move to make it yours. I'm sat quite near the edge of it. I take my upper body back at diagonal from my tailbone to the crown of the head, there's a long line. Hold the chair or take your arms in front, up to you. I come onto my left big toe, just to the tip of it. I lift the leg up. I tuck the foot down, I lift it up. So just note the bend in the knee is not changing. This is just that hinge of the hips again. And tuck down. Give me four, I'm laughing because I know my leg's gonna really shake shortly on the next one. And three, so if it doesn't feel right for you, just take your shoulder blades down. Make sure you're not resting there. It just gives that other point of contact, a bit more support. Two. One, hold it there, let's pulse it. Small and high. So remember your back is not rounding, nothing's changing shape here. And hold it high, oh, I'm gonna shake. Reach your leg and bend it in so the thigh bone doesn't move. Reach your leg and bend it in. Oh, the shakes are real. Give me four and bend. So if you need to, you could take it a bit lower and reach it. If you're losing your form by trying to keep that thigh bone high, just let it drop a bit. Give me two, so you see there's our teaser, or our one leg teaser. Last one, reach it, bend it, take that foot down, sit up for a moment. Oh, so there's a lot going. I did see someone lean forwards there. Remember, take this option. If you feel it's not right for you, if it's pulling anywhere, please don't push through it. Okay, find that long diagonal line again. Strong throughout the upper body. Arms reach or you hold the chair. Come up to the right toe and lift and tap. And lift and tap. I've got an energy coming through the crown of my head. Kind of looking about two thirds of the way up the wall in front of me. That's keeping my neck aligned. Two. One, hold it high and we pulse, pulse. Four, three, let me keep an eye on the time. I'll give us up for a few minutes. Two, one, keep your thigh bone there, where it is, look at it for a moment. Kick long, bend in, shake a little bit. Whew. 
Take long. Bend in. Give me four. Reach through the toes. Three. Whew. And two. And last kick. Final bend. Take that foot down and you're going to help yourself up. Okay, so the next part, we're going to do shoulder bridges. We're going to do them with our feet to elevate it. And I think this is really nice for the back. If you've got perfect tail, take it out so you get your neck alignment. But for any reason you don't want to do it with your feet on the chair, you can do it normal shoulder bridges with your feet on the floor. But I find on the way down from the bridge, because our feet are elevated, you just get so much more normal mobility through the spine. Okay, so um, I'm going to imagine I've got a yoga block in between the knuckles of my big toes. So my feet aren't together, but I feel like I'm squeezing on a yoga block. That way your feet and your knees aren't going to drift out to the side. You stay in a strong position. Press your arms down. Just gaze up to the ceiling. And I just want you to let your back fall into its, just its most comfortable, its natural shape. Now you're going to hold that shape. Pull your ribcage in. Hold the shape. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Press your hands and shoulders down to lift your hips up. Now remember you're squeezing on something in between your feet. Tuck your tailbone between your legs so the shape of your spine has changed now. We've gone into flexion. And then you melt the spine down. So remember you're squeezing on a yoga block between your knees and your feet. Let your back just fall to its natural shape at the bottom. Lift it up. You pull your big toes back towards you a bit. Ribs heavy, hips high. Tuck your tailbone and melt the spine down. 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 Release it at the bottom. We've got three more, please. We lift using the entire hands there. We tuck and we try and find each vertebra individually on the way down with that beautiful mobility. Give me two, please. Lift and melt. Make sure you're breathing here. Oh, I feel the back of my legs working. Still pulling your big toes back towards you. Lift up. We pulse it up and down this time. Imagine you've got yoga block in between your knees as well as your feet. Don't let them drift. You're squeezing on them. But the legs still aren't together. But they're not drifting. Give me three, two, neck long, one. Hold it there. Again, find each vertebra on the way. Oh, down. My goodness. There's a lot of leg work today. So up to you but I'm gonna hover my right leg now, so I have to really work hard through my left-hand side. A bit like a lunge, we're working hard to keep you aligned without your more dominant side taking over. The right knee is over the hip. Arms press down. Come up, pull your left big toe back towards you, and melt down. Use those arms. Lift up, four. Your left kneecap is facing up, and melt down. Make sure you're not holding your breath because it's tough on the left leg. Let your breath help you. Three. And melt. So we're looking for like this quietness in the pelvis. It's not twisting and rocking. Two. Softly. Controlled down movement. Notice where your sticky spots are in the spine as well. Last one here. Pulse up for five. So it's the bum going up and down. Your right leg's only moving because the bum's lifting. Give me three, two. Oh, my left leg is screaming. One, melt the spine down. Oh, that was quite quick. And rest your right calf on your chair. Take your hands behind your left leg. Pull the left knee in. Just wiggle it side to side a bit. And then come to centre. Just pull it in a bit more. Let your left foot relax. And then kick the left leg up just to... Lengthen the back of the leg. Oh, ease it off after all of those bridges. And bend it in. Kick up. And fold it in. Two more. Kick the leg up. Now flex the foot. Pull your left big toe back towards you. Soften the foot. Fold the thigh in. Pull it a bit closer to your belly. Last time, kick up 
Oh, my leg's shaking. Flex, so you don't want to go into that shake zone. If you're shaking, it might be um, counterproductive. So you can always let the leg go a bit further away from you. But you're really deliberately pushing that heel up. Okay, and release. So let's get ourselves set up. So remember, you can do this with both feet on the chair. It's up to you, or both feet on the floor. My left foot hovers. My right big toe pulls back towards me. I lift to my bridge for five. And then mount down. Again, listen to where the sticky spots are in your back. Mine's my lower back, where my metal work is. So I just try and work through that a bit, uh, just a bit more deliberately. Obviously, I'm not going to change it completely because metal is metal. But I can just work through any tightness in the muscles supporting. Give me three. And mount. So your right big toe should be facing up to the ceiling. Okay, two. Imagine I'm there with you, press your right inner thigh into my hand and down. So always working towards our midline. Last one, please lift. Got that rib cage heavy, neck long, hold five, four, bum going up and down, three. Oh my goodness, it's hard on this side too. One, melt it down. Take the left leg down to rest and let the right knee come in and just pull it in, rock it, ease it. Okay. And when you're ready, come to center and just reach that right leg up. Not doing anything with your foot at this stage. And bend in. And reach up. Remember, you're not going into that shake zone and bend in. Last two. This time, if you'd like to deepen your stretch, you flex the foot. Push the heel up to the ceiling, put your right, or pull your right big toe back towards you. Soften the foot, soften the knee into the chest. One more time, please. Kick up. Flex strongly. Get that lovely openness down the back of the knee. And relax. So we're going to do a little bit of ab work with our, I'm going to make sure I'm in view. So we're going to have long legs. The back of my heels, back of the ankles are on the chair. My feet are parallel. First of all, I just want you to, we're going to ease through the shoulders for a moment. Let everything just fall into your comfortable position, but pull the rib cage in because we're going to do arm movement. I don't want your ribs to flare out into your t-shirt. Okay, lift both arms up to the ceiling. Start taking them back to the floor behind you without your rib cage popping up towards the ceiling. And then circle your arms out and round, staying on the floor if they can, until they come back to your side. So it's deliberate inhaling going over. Ribs dropping heavy as your arms go back. And exhale, sweep them round and wide and down by your side. Last one this way, please. Just think ribs heavy, ribs heavy. Let the arms do their thing. They know what they're doing. And your arms go wide. So we're gonna reverse this. Inhale, your arms go wide. Ribs still heavy. Exhale, they go forwards. Now close your eyes for the next two. Does one hand lift from the floor before the other? You feel tighter one side to the other. Take your time just really feeling what's happening. Remembering that at the beginning we spoke about this constant feedback. We're just going into our last arm circle. This constant feedback our body is giving us, but we often are too busy to notice. Okay, this time as your arms go forwards, open your eyes. You nod your chin to your chest and you flex those shoulders up. I want you to spin your pelvis under you. So the lower, it's not about coming up high, it's about just getting the shoulders to go forwards. Tailbone spins between your legs. Think how a naughty dog would be. Do, you know, they tuck their tailbone under. And then lengthen your spine out and down, take your arms back. Exhale, we come forwards. So you press the lower back down, you reach your shoulders forwards. 
and you take it back. I've got to keep an eye on the time. Oh, five minutes left and so much more to do. Give me two. Crown of the head, right up towards the ceiling. It's not going to the wall behind you. And take it down. And you come up. And we hold it here. So remember, we're trying to get the shoulders forward as much as we can. Squeeze your legs together and beat your arms, breathing in, two, three, four, five, and out. So this is our hundred. We're doing it with our feet on the chair. Just because we're not taking a shortcut, we're not making it easier. I want you to focus on those shoulders coming forward the whole time. We're going to add some leg work in a moment if you want to, but you definitely don't have to. So I'm going to inhale, lift my right leg, still pumping my arms and exhale, lower my right leg, so taking my time. Inhale, left leg, shoulders higher, and we lower. I can't talk and pump my timing so bad. Shoulders higher. I'm more interested in your shoulders today than what your leg is doing. So if you want that to be your main focus, that's absolutely fine. And reach it long as you lower it if you're doing the leg. I've got your wrists, I'm putting your arms forward. Don't roll back and lower that leg. Last set, lifting two, three, four, five, and out, two, three, four, five, pause, shoulders up, and release down. Oh my goodness, stretch it out. Hold it here for a moment, and just let everything relax. Let it fall into the shape you want it, to, or it wants to be in. Bring your focus to your breath. Breathing in for about the count of four or five through your nose. And exhale completely. Remember again, we're not tensing our jaw. It's a soft mouth. On the inhale, you feel the rise of the rib cage, front, back, side. It's like a 3D breath. And with that exhale, everything just gets heavy and there's that sense of ease and relief. Okay, we're going to do a couple of roll-ups here and we're going to remember where our sticky spots were when we were doing our shoulder bridge earlier. If your back is tight, you can bend your knees and you can take your hands behind your legs and help yourself up if you wish. So again, adapt it, make it yours. Or you could do it with your feet on the floor. But I'm going to take my arms to the floor behind me. This time we are letting the lower back come up if, if you've got that movement. I'm going to take a deep breath in and as I exhale, I'm coming forward. And we reach. Everything's reaching forward apart from my belly pulls back into my spine. Now on my way down, I'm noticing again where those sticky spots are. Coming down, it's the area that just wants to fall down. That's where, you know, that's your body giving you that feedback again. And I come up, breathing the whole time. Everything reaching forward apart from the belly pulls back. There's always this two-way stretch. Remember, you can use your legs if you need to. Slowly, my tummy's rumbling, slowly down. Okay, so your tight spot could be anywhere. It could be like bra strap line, the, the area that appears a bit hunchback as we get older if we don't keep it mobile. It could be your lower back, it could be anywhere. So it doesn't matter what I'm doing. We're gonna work through it. Just close your eyes if it helps. I'm gonna come down to my tight spot, which is kind of lumbar spine. And I'm gonna pulse it up a bit and I go down through it. And I come up, and I go down through it. Keep tucking your pelvis under you. Give me five. And four, the belly pulls back as the shoulders come forward. And three, oh, I've got my abs working. I feel that more than my back loosening. Give me two. And one. And then slowly come down. I'm going to take my feet to underneath my chair and I take a full body stretch. Going as long as I possibly can, fingertips to the wall behind me, toes to the wall in front. And then you just bend your knees, feet on the floor, roll yourself onto your side so you can press yourself up, please. And we're going to finish seated on our chair. Okay. So I'm going to sit, sit, 
quite close to the edge of the chair. I want you to actually feel your sit bones. I think when we sit quite often, kind of slump back. But if we're on the edge of our chair and we feel those, do you feel those two knobbly bits you sit on? That's just going to help you lift up a bit. So finding your sit bones, just take your hands behind your thighs. I'd like you to do a bit of a seated cow. So I breathe in, ripple through the spine into my cat's pose, sorry. And then I exhale, reverse it. Lift the breastbone up, gaze up. Inhale, round, I need to come further forward, round out. Exhale, lift up. So that rippling through each and every vertebra. One more time. I'm going to come to face you. So we're going into our cat. Whoopsie. I had my step. And then coming up, bringing our spine into some extension. Let me move over. And then come somewhere in between. Take your right hand, wrap it around the chair. Lift your left arm up. Side bend to the left. Press down into the left-hand side of the bottom. Imagine I'm there with my hand on the right side of the ribcage. I'm pressing into it to open out the opposite side. And then switch. Let's go for three. Reach, so I'm there pressing into your rib. And switch for two. Take as much from it as you can. And one. And then we're just going to finish with a little bit of twist. So you're going to take your right hand behind your chair. Oh, where's my chair? Put your left hand onto the right leg and then lift and twist. So you're pulling on the leg to enhance the rotation. And let's switch for three. Gaze back to the wall behind you. Your feet and your knees are lined up. This twist is coming from the waist. Give me two. And one more time, please. Twist, look back. And come to centre. And you are done.